there and welcome to the Anyway channel. I'm Anya, a marketing professional specializing in analytics and automation. In this video, I wanted to cover a very trending topic in marketing right now, which is Google Consent Mode V2. Just last month, Google announced that in order to comply with the Digital Markets Act, they need to change and update the way that Google Consent Mode works and the way that they gather and share the user consent data within their products, such as Google Analytics and Google Ads. So of course this sparked a lot of conversations on LinkedIn, but also raised a lot of confusion. And with the tight deadline being March, 2024, people are kind of scrambling to get the set up to make sure that their Google ads campaigns and performance is not affected. I also wrote a blog article about this, which you can read on anyway.com slash blog. But in this video, I also wanted to go over what is Google consent mode? What's changed since version one? How does it affect marketers and your Google ads accounts? and what are the next realistic steps for your situation or business. So Google consent mode is kind of an addition to your existing cookie banner or cookie management platform. It's not cookie consent on its own. It's just an additional way that Google can receive information that lets it see whether somebody has consented, whether they can be included in remarketing, in specific ad personalization, for example. So it's an addition to your cookie consent. So in order to comply with this, in the first place, you need to make sure that you have a cookie banner or a cookie consent management platform. And on top of that, then you need to implement the Google consent mode V2. So the V1 has actually been in beta since about 2020. So there are some websites that already had consent mode implemented. And this has mainly been helpful for Google Analytics, where if the user hasn't accepted cookies, it was a way for you to get additional information through Google's modeling, which I'll go over in a little bit as well. And the way that it works is you have a cookie banner on your website. The user who visits your website, if they're from the EU, they should be presented with a cookie banner. They then have a choice to either accept the cookies or decline the cookies. They can also make a choice for specific types of cookies, such as analytics, marketing, essential, etc. So if the user accepts cookies on your website, what's supposed to happen is only then the scripts are allowed to fire. So until they have consented, no script should be firing. So for example, Google Ads conversions, GA4 script. And once they do accept either the marketing or analytics or both uh, types of cookies, then these scripts are allowed to fire and start tracking. If the user declines cookies, theoretically, none of the scripts should run, they should be blocked. And the way that Google consent mode is supposed to help with this is that if the user declines the cookies, the scripts are blocked, but Google still receives some information such as about the user's device, from which they can then deduce and use in their algorithms to predict or estimate whether a conversion should have happened. So this has actually been in place for a lot of GA4 properties, and you will see this uh, in your GA4 reports. It will say data has been modeled since this date. So that means that your data has already been supplemented with additional information based on Google's modeling algorithm to help you kind of estimate or predict additional conversions which are not captured when the user declines cookies. So with version two, the main difference without getting too technical is that they've had to add new parameters to their already existing ad storage parameter. So the ad storage is what's related to the marketing cookies when somebody accepts it on your website. And now with consent mode V2, it basically allows to send an additional two parameters. One is called add user data and the other one is called add personalization. So this is supposed to let Google know whether somebody wants their ads to be personalized, whether they can be used in remarketing lists and some other things that are important for Google ads campaigns. The main difference for marketers specifically is that version two is actually a requirement. It's not really an option how consent mode V1 was. So consent mode V1 was mainly useful for GA4, but with consent mode V2, there is no more option of implementing it. They are making this a requirement for you to be able to even use Google ads in the first place. So the main confusion that I've seen on LinkedIn and in conversations and the questions that I've been getting from my clients really is all around this whole basic versus advanced implementation. Consent mode V2 essentially comes in two flavors. There is the basic implementation and the advanced implementation. So the basic implementation sounds a bit counterintuitive because it's actually a bit more work. So it's a bit more setup and it's a bit more restrictive, let's say. 
And the advanced implementation is the one that gives you the additional modeled data from Google. So the advanced implementation actually works the same way as the original consent mode v1, where anonymous pings are sent to Google. And you'll hear many different names for this. You'll hear cookie-less pings, anonymous pings, pings. Um, what it essentially means is that as opposed to usually when there is consent being granted, Google will set the cookie in your user's browser. So for example, with GA4, that's the GA cookie where they are storing the information for that browser in order to track the user across several sessions. What cookie list means is that they do not set that cookie, but they're still definitely able to get the information of the actual device. So they're still getting a lot of information and a lot even about the session itself, even though the user has not consented. But this basically allows you to access the advanced modeling features for conversions. And whereas before this mainly affected GA4, this now actually has an impact on Google Ads as well. With the basic implementation, you're essentially required to set up additional consent checks on top of the built-in consent that you have in your Google Tag Manager tags which would essentially completely block Google scripts from running. So even the, the anonymous pings, Google would not receive those. So any script would be entirely blocked. So of course, as marketers, we would want to have as much data as possible for our campaigns, but there are definitely some trade-offs, especially if you have a legal department in your company and you will definitely need to have a conversation with them. So. This is a great table to kind of explain the benefits and trade-offs between the two types of implementation. As I mentioned, with the advanced implementation, the Google tags are actually loaded before the consent dialog ever appears. So the tag is there and it's loaded and it's getting the information from the browser or the user. And when the consent is declined, it sends that cookie-less information back to Google. If it's accepted, it just carries on as normal. So with this advanced implementation, you will get access to behavioral modeling in GA4 and conversion modeling both in GA4 and Google Ads. Um, with the basic implementation, you can see that the Google tags are completely blocked until consent is granted. So people who have not granted consent, their data is not collected. So you will not see behavioral modeling in GA4, but they do say that for conversion modeling in both GA4 and Google Ads, they use a general model so not based on the information that they receive, based on the time of day, on your other um, conversions that you've received in your account, like browser type, uh, like conversion action type. So non-identifying variables. And in terms of remarketing, you actually get access to remarketing in both implementations. So this is also another point of confusion that I've seen. And the only difference is that with the basic implementation, you will of course see a much smaller sample for your remarketing audiences than you would with the advanced implementation, which would supplement a bit of that data. So now I want to dive a bit deeper into modeling and how exactly does it work with unconsented conversions in Google Ads specifically. So Google Ads, just as GA4, really heavily relies on cookies in order to track conversions and most importantly, be able to attribute them to specific ad clicks. So when users do not provide their consent, it is quite a big problem for Google Ads to not receive these conversions because also as an advertiser, that means that your CPA is higher if there's less conversions that are being tracked. That means the algorithm can't optimize as well. So to kind of account for these missing conversions, Google created this alternative method, which they're calling conversion modeling. And I do say here that modeling is only activated in the advanced implementation, but as we saw on the table earlier, there is technically modeling based on general models for the basic implementation as well. But if you dig a bit deeper into Google's articles, they're really heavily pushing for you to implement the advanced version so that you have one, more data and more accurate data because they're still receiving some of the user data in general. And two, probably also to feed their own algorithms more data from that. So I really doubt that they're going to be modeling uh, conversions for the basic implementation because there is really not that much data to go off of. And if they do change that, I will update the article. But for now, I think it's pretty safe to assume that modeling will be mainly uh, available with the advanced implementation. 
And there is quite a nice graphic from Google here, which basically breaks down how exactly the conversions will be modeled for unconsented users. So if you have a thousand clicks, let's say 500 of these were consented, 500 were unconsented. If they're consented, all good, they're recorded as normal. If they're unconsented, they're modeled, so not observed, and the modeled conversion rate is actually a lot lower. So they're kind of giving you an estimate and they're also reducing the conversion rate uh, because apparently, according to their data, the conversion rate from unconsented users is like two to four times lower than consented. So that basically drives the decreased conversion rate. Let's say in truth, there were 12. So it actually says, it's actually saying that it will be undercounting instead of overcounting. So it'll be underestimating. And these nine unconsented conversions will be included in your total conversion count in your Google Ads reporting. So what they're saying here is that the conversion rate without consent mode would have been 5%, with consent mode, 5.9%. So we have an 18% conversion uplift. So an 18% conversion uplift is great, but of course that is at the cost of your users technically not consenting to their information being collected by Google. So I mentioned here that it's not always an acceptable choice for businesses because it's still not clear what exactly is the data that they're capturing, what is included in these pings. The fact that the script runs before the banner even pops up is concerning enough. So some businesses will definitely need to consult their legal teams and assess, as I said, the tolerance levels between the two. So you'll likely need to sit with your legal department as a marketer and kind of explain to them what is the benefits that you're getting out of doing the advanced implementation. So for example, you'll be able to see more conversions with the conversion uplift. Um, therefore, your CPAs will be lower. Google will be receiving more data in terms of their al the algorithm for your campaigns and all of these things that kind of have affect you as a marketer. But also make sure to mention that the data that is allowing this uplift is not technically consented data from the users of your website. So what happens if you're using Google Ads and you don't implement Google consent mode by March 2024? It's a very close deadline. So without Google consent mode v2, Google can't receive these additional parameters that I mentioned earlier to ensure that compliance. So this is really a requirement from Google's side. It's really unclear at this point what's going to happen in March and what actions Google will take for those who do not implement consent mode v2. But they did update their EU user consent policy, which now states that they may limit or suspend your use of Google products and or terminate your agreement. So you could risk losing your Google Ads account or Google could send you a lot of warnings or maybe additional time to implement consent mode v2. But since it is something that they need in order to comply with their regulations, it is definitely something that they're going to be chasing every single advertiser about. <laughs> and the last question that I've been receiving is whether GA4 will be affected by Google Consent Mode v2. So when you're implementing it, you're also going to implement it for GA4. And Google Analytics is affected if your Google Ads account is connected or linked in GA4 admin. So if you're exporting any audiences or conversions to Google Ads from GA4, then this also impacts you. And you also need to set up Google Consent Mode v2 on the GA4 tags. But if you do not run Google Ads and you're only using Google Analytics 4 for behavior analytics, then there is not so much urgency to implement uh, Consent Mode v2 yet. So it is possible that they will have something in the future that will also be a requirement for GA4. And note that you should still have a cookie consent banner in place if you have EU visitors data captured on your website. So even if you're not using Google Ads and technically this doesn't affect you in terms of your Google Ads performance, you should still have a cookie consent banner and capture your user's consent on your website if your users are in the EU. So now that you know about Google Consent Mode v2, how do you actually implement this on your website? So the first thing you should do is go to consent.anyway.com, which is a tool that we created where you can easily check whether your website has Google Consent Mode v2 implemented. The reason why you should do this first is if you already have a consent management platform and you have a cookie banner on your website, 
it's very likely that the cookie provider that you're using could have already enabled consent mode v2 automatically. So for example, CookieBot, the provider that I'm using, does this automatically. You'll receive some information about your cookie provider and also if Google consent mode is active. So if you use the consent checker on anyway.com and you find out that Google consent mode v2 has been detected and you want to use advanced implementation, there is nothing else to do. If you use the checker and you find that consent mode v2 has not been implemented on your website, then it fully depends on the kind of cookie provider that you're using and how to implement consent mode v2. This is kind of the annoying part of all of this is every single provider does it differently if you're using Google Tag Manager versus if you've had your cookie banner hard-coded, it's different. For some providers, you have to enable consent mode v2 in the actual cookie provider's settings but for others, it's something that you do in Google Tag Manager. So there's a lot of variations and there is dozens, if not hundreds of cookie providers at this point. So it is a bit hard to break down every single one. But what I would recommend is Googling your consent provider appended by Google Consent Mode V2. So for example, CookieBot, Google Consent Mode V2. And then you should be able to get documentation from the cookie provider as an article if you haven't already been reached out by them via email. So that's for the advanced implementation, which doesn't require any additional setup. So as long as you had the consent mode enabled uh, on the side of your cookie provider, then the additional parameters should be received by Google. But if you want to go ahead with the basic implementation, there is a bit more setup, as I mentioned. So I'm just going to go into my Google Tag Manager account. The first thing you will need to do is go to your admin and then your container settings and enable consent overview. Then the second thing you will need to do is for every single one of your tags, you will now see in the tag section, the consent overview button. And for every single one of your tags, you will need to define an additional consent parameter. So in my case, I am doing the advanced implementation and I basically set, uh, I don't have any Google ads tags, but I've set all of my GA4 tags as requiring no additional consent. So it's only using the built-in consent, which means that it's gonna use the advanced implementation. For the basic implementation, which is the restricted one, you're actually gonna to need to add additional consent here. So for example, I want to select these two events. I want to manage the consent. And then I say that I require additional consent for this tag. For Google Ads, that additional consent would be ad storage. For analytics, that would be analytics storage. And then once you save it, it will update these tags to require additional consent, which means that tags cannot fire until somebody has granted that analytics consent. If you don't have Google Tag Manager or you have a custom cookie banner, then this implementation is a bit more difficult. There is quite a few resources on developers.google.com. So it means that you would need a developer to help you with this. If you don't have one, then I would heavily recommend just getting a consent management platform and managing everything through Google Tag Manager. But otherwise, your developers should be able to help implement this based on the documentation provided by Google. So that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you learned something and feel more confident about Google Consent Mode v2. If you have any questions or you run into issues during your implementation, please feel free to leave a comment in the video down below, or you can also book a call or contact me directly by going to anyway.com contact. Please don't forget to like and share the video so that others can find it and subscribe for more marketing tips. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.